In this devlog, I'm going to narrate the process that I used to create this guy. Uh, it took me under two hours, even though I'm not a particularly experienced 3D modeler. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is concept art. It's used to help me understand the proportions of my character, and I'm going to use it for texturing. So uh, it's really important to get the style right, which is the hardest thing. Um, I'm using uh, Midjourney, which is a AI image generator. It's really good. Um, tools these days are phenomenal. I'm paying for it. Uh, this isn't sponsored, but I, I recommend it. Um, I already spent some time figuring out styles. Um, so what you see in the time lapse is me just generating a new character. So once I have my concept art, I'm going to import that into Blender as a reference image. It takes me some time to figure out how to do that. And once I've done that, I'm going to create a single vertex and I'm going to add the mirror modifier, the skin modifier, and the subdivide modifier. So the skin modifier is so I only have to worry about one half of the character. And the other two modifiers allow me to basically create a stick figure and then the modifiers flesh out the stick figure into a character. The way it works is that each vertex is kind of a ball of um, matter and the skin modifier tries to merge them together sensibly. The skin modifier isn't perfect and sometimes it doesn't merge things correctly or leaves out faces um, or merges things too eagerly. So a lot of the video you see me just wrestle with that. There's not really any good ways of fixing it other than just messing around with the size of each vertex and the position of each vertex. There's a few hotkeys which I've learned. Um, I learned during this video, which are extremely useful. So I'll share those for you. We've got Shift A, which allows you to scale the vertex. If you use X and Y, they allow you to scale just on uh, in a single direction. We also have Control R to cut an edge. So add a, another vertex in there. Shift V to slide a vertex along an edge. And then, uh, if you press delete but choose dissolve instead of delete, it allows you to get rid of a vertex while uh, leaving the edge that it's on um, intact if the vertex is between two other vertices. Using those hotkeys, um, basically I, I managed to figure out all of the um, all of the glitches that I saw in the final model. One thing that I will say while uh, past me struggles with hands is that uh, my game world is filled with toxic smog. So my characters are all wearing jumpsuits and gas masks. And it was a really tactical choice for me to make my world filled with smog because gas masks and boiler suits are much easier than normal clothes and faces to model. So yeah, work smarter, not harder, as they say. Interaction with the mirror modifier and the skin modifier is a bit weird. Sometimes the geometry is not exactly mirrored and it means that your geometry will be fine on one side and broken or glitchy on the other side. So you can see that with my character's right hand, it's broken, even though the left hand was working fine. So uh, to fix that, again, it was just trial and error. I was looking at the right broken hand while working on the uh, left hand in the distance. Um, there was nothing I could do to guarantee that I didn't, you know, fix the right hand and break the left hand. Again, just trial and error. My character has a collar, which uh, took me a while to figure out how to do properly. Um, at one point, I tried to make a loop. That definitely doesn't work. At one point, I tried to um, have two vertices that sort of overlap. That's also not something advisable. Um, you'll see eventually, um, I figure out I have a sort of cross formation. Um, making your stick figure have overlapping um, edges or 
loops seems like um, the path to madness, so I recommend avoiding that. While there's some sort of dead time in the time lapse while past me struggles with 3D modeling, I'll share that uh, my game is called Ballistic Zen. It's a first person platformer with movement mechanics um, loosely based on air strafing from like Quake and surfing and so on. If you'd like to support me, the best thing you can do is wishlist the game on Steam. I'll put the link in the description. Once the model is done, it's time to move to the texturing phase, which took me a while to figure out. The first thing you need to do is apply the modifiers, which means your geometry becomes final, um, at least to the extent that you can no longer use the uh, you can no longer use the stick figure technique. Um, once I have uh, done that, I select all the vertices of the applied model and unwrap them. Um, I didn't have the x-ray modifier on at first, so I'm confused in the time lapse as to why only half of the character is being textured. The next thing to do is import the uh, concept art as a stencil, which basically allows you to, you know, put the image over your model and just draw or stamp the image onto your model. You can use the right mouse button to manipulate this stencil. You can see that I didn't pose my character the same way that he's posed in the concept art. So I have to manipulate the image to kind of fit it to my model. The other thing is that my concept art doesn't have hands or legs or the back of the character you need to get creative in this situation. Um, so for example, I am just using the jumpsuit texture to kind of paint down the legs. And that's one of the advantages of having my characters wear jumpsuits. Um, on the back, I kind of have some idea that I don't want it to be exactly mirrored to the front. So I have this idea to take this one yellow spot that's on the front and make it some buttons on the back. You can see that the front and the back of the character, uh, the transition doesn't work very well. So I'm going to use a brush with a slightly lower opacity to just um, blend them together. It's a pretty easy process. Um, for the back of the head, I again, it's just about getting creative and making something, anything work. I think the head is the main part of the character that I'm not completely satisfied with. So for the next character, I'm going to add some more geometry there. And I'll probably do that after the uh, skin modifier section. I'll probably apply the modifier and then manually add some tubes and things to make it a bit more interesting. I thought the hands would be a lot more complicated, but just having a flat texture with a skin color looked good enough for my game. It was a stroke of luck that the concept art had this uh, color as the background, so I didn't need to think about it at all. If the concept art doesn't have this, obviously it would be easy enough to just select a color and use a flat color paintbrush. So that's my character. To rig this guy, I uploaded him to Mixamo. It's not the most perfect rigging, but it's unbelievably simple, so for a game of my scale, it's absolutely perfect. If you'd like to support me, please wishlist Ballistic Zen on Steam. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks for watching.